Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You are watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday the 16th of November. Thousands take shelter in India as conflict rages on in Myanmar. Issues will settle when Kabul would have legitimate government, says Pakistan PM. And Bangladesh sets parliamentary election for Jan 7 amid violent protests. Now for all the details, around 5,000 people from Myanmar have sought shelter in India's northeastern state of Mizoram after the Myanmar army launched an airstrike in the bordering areas along the Indo-Myanmar border. A report. As the conflict rages on, around 5,000 Myanmar nationals have sought refuge in India's Mizoram after the Myanmar army launched an airstrike in the bordering areas along the Indo-Myanmar border. The refugees said that they have been receiving a lot of help from the locals in Mizoram who are providing them with food and shelter. Myanmar's generals are facing their biggest test since they seized power in a 2021 coup after three ethnic minority forces launched a coordinated offensive in late October, capturing some towns and military posts. Now we have nothing, so cannot go back also very is difficult to go back so we have to stay here how long we stay here we also don't know nobody know and then um, so uh, the people is like uh, very good for us in Zaukotar we see also and then all the people is help us so much so much and give us what we need every time we help they help us yeah, here they are living very peaceful and they are living like a people of Mizoram. Uh, we care about them and whatever they got problem, we help from uh, Weime. We just go and help them if they have problem. The first influx from the neighboring country happened in 2021 when the junta seized power. Since then, thousands of people from Myanmar have taken shelter in Mizoram. The offensive initially made inroads in junta-controlled areas on the border with China, where military authorities have lost control of several towns and more than 100 security outposts. India's Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar on Wednesday asked Canada to provide evidence to support Canadian PM Justin Trudeau's allegation of India's involvement in the killing of Khalistani separatist Hardeep Singh Nijjar. Jay Shankar, responding to a query during an event in London, said that India is not ruling out an investigation in the matter. However, there was no evidence to back Ottawa's claim. He said he had discussed the matter with his Canadian counterpart, but no proof has been shared so far. On the case of Mr. Trudeau, uh, we have, I, I, I have discussed it also with my own uh, uh, counterpart. I still do. Uh, and uh, we have told them, so look, if you have a reason to make such an allegation, mm. please share the evidence with us. Mm. We, you know, we, we, are not, we are not ruling out uh, uh, an investigation and looking at anything which they may have to offer. Jay Shankar, highlighting attacks on Indian mission in Canada, said that political environment in Canada has given space to violent and extreme political opinions advocating separatism from India. He said misuse of freedom of expression and the toleration of that misuse for political purposes would be, to our mind, very wrong. Moving on, Pakistan's interim PM Anwarul Haqqakar has defended his government's policy of repatriating illegal Afghan immigrants and said that issues would start to settle the day Afghanistan would have a legitimate government. Pakistan's Speaking at an event, Kakkar acknowledged that non-state actors were posing a security threat to Pakistan, Pakistan while identifying the lax implementation of the rule of law, proxy warfare and weak economy as main cause of internal strife. Pakistan early this month stated expulsion of all undocumented Afghan immigrants, citing security reasons, brushing of calls from the UN and rights groups to reconsider the move. 
The mass migration has also raised fears of a humanitarian crisis as Kabul grapples with hundreds of thousands of people arriving and staying in makeshift tent villages on its side of the border amid the onset of winter. Moving on, frequent load shedding and hefty power bills have continued to trigger unrest in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. Residents say they are fed up of unfair taxes being imposed on them. A report. Unscheduled and long hours of load shedding and over that inflated electricity bills have irked the residents of Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. Locals say it is ironic that even after generating thousands of megawatts of electricity through hydropower projects in the region, they are made to suffer. They blame that it is injustice that they are not given any sort of subsidy. हम लोड शेडिंग के हिसाब से गुजरते हैं बिजली हम पैदा करते हैं और फिर हमें पाकिस्तान के रेट पे महंगी बिजली दी जाती है पूरी दुनिया में ये मसलमा उसूल है कि जहां पैदावार होती है वहां सस्ती दी जाती है चीज दे हैव बीन सेवरल प्रोटेस्ट अगेंस्ट द पाकिस्तान गवर्नमेंट ओवर अनफेयर टैक्सेस एंड सोरिंग इन्फ्लेशन बट ऑल इन वेन Locals accuse Islamabad is pushing more and more people into abject poverty through its failed economic policies. Bangladesh will go to polls on January 7th the country's poll body announced on Wednesday. The election schedule comes amid countrywide blockades and deadly protests by the main opposition Bangladesh Nationalist Party which is demanding Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina to relinquish the office. BNP whose top leadership is either jailed or in exile has already said it will boycott the election if Hasina does not resign and allow in a caretaker government The incumbent PM who has maintained tight control since coming to power in 2009 has been accused of authoritarianism rights violation and crackdown on free speech Western powers have also called on Bangladesh to hold free and fair elections The United States in particular has implemented a visa restriction for Bangladeshi nationals who undermine election process in their home country. And a Sri Lankan court has sentenced a fisherman from India's Tamil Nadu to two years imprisonment on charges of repeated trespassing and poaching, while 21 others who had been arrested along with him have been ordered to be released, reports have suggested. In three different incidents in October, the Sri Lankan Navy had arrested 64 fishermen from India. Authorities had earlier this week freed 42 of them. India and Sri Lanka share an expansive oceanic border without any perceptible demarcation. Fishermen from both the countries frequently stray into each other's territory while netting the catch and end up spending years in jail. Renowned artists from across India took part in a national level art camp held recently at the Chashma Shahi Garden in Jammu and Kashmir. The camp served as a platform for artists to showcase their diverse talents and engage in artistic exchanges, fostering a vibrant atmosphere of creativity. Artists said the scenic beauty of Kashmir served as an inspiring backdrop, igniting their creativity and influencing their artistic expressions. They urged authorities to organize more such camps frequently as they highlight the values of cultural exchange and also help in tourism. तो बड़ा अच्छा लगा आनंद लगा कि हम कश्मीर कभी देखे नहीं थे यहाँ पे जो माहौल है यहाँ का जो आर्टिस्ट हैं और हमारा उनका जो बातचीत एक्सचेंज हो रहा है कुछ काम को सीखने को मिल रहा है हमको भी सीखने को मिल रहा है उनको भी सीखने मिल रहा है टैलेंटी तो अच्छी है और सबसे अच्छा लगा मुझे यहाँ के एक आर्टिस्ट के लिए नेचर से जुड़ा बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट है और लगभग मैं बोलूँ तो सारी चीज़ वो नेचर से सीखता है और कश्मीर नेचर के पास है Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.